Let's talk about some of my favorite food chains in Colombia. Hi all, I'm Ezrado and you're watching my travel channel where I talk all things Colombia. As the title suggests, today I have five Colombian restaurants and cafe chains that I wanted to talk about, some well known, others less so, but all of which are mostly exclusive to Colombia. I should probably give a disclaimer and say that if you're looking for places that serve traditional Colombian food exclusively, you'll find this a lot more in local eateries. None of these places I'm about to talk about are distinctively Colombian in terms of the food they serve. There are certainly some traditional Colombian dishes or drinks you'll find at all of these places, or at the very least Colombian influenced, but just not exclusively. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The first place that I wanted to talk about is actually a chain that's exclusive to Bogotá, and that is Ornitos. This is a really inviting cafe with about 19 locations spread around the city at the time of recording. One of the things I love about this place is how versatile it is for whatever you're feeling like. Uh, don't get me wrong, it still is a cafe, not a buffet, but the menu has enough variety to where you can come for a breakfast, lunch or dinner, and no matter what, you'll always find something suitable for the given time of day. For breakfast there are a myriad of options, each of which is a delicately curated combination of ingredients. My personal favourite would have to be these pancakes, which are smothered in Greek yoghurt, spread with hazelnuts, red berries and red berry sauce, along with maple syrup. Of course, if you're in the mood for a hot breakfast, there are also a ton of delicious combinations, as you can see here. Once again though, this isn't just a breakfast cafe, as a lot of the dishes are also suited for lunch and dinner. You'll notice here that there are several soups available, along with some gourmet sandwiches, bruschettes, salads, and more. Another major facet of this chain that I ought to mention is that it's also a bakery, offering both bread and desserts for eating in and to take home with you. In case all of that wasn't enough, what further cements this on the list are the prices. For some reason that's beyond me, all of these mouth-watering dishes and items are really cheap. You might assume that this is because of the weakness of the Colombian peso, and that's partly true, but what I'm saying is that even compared to all the other chains on this list, the stuff here is very reasonably priced. Like those amazing pancakes I just showed you before, just three US dollars. You want lunch or a dinner combo with a sandwich, garlic bread, some crisps, a soup and a juice? Just over six dollars. I'm telling you, if you want to eat on a budget without sacrificing quality, Hornitos is the place to go. Let's move on though to my next pick, which is a burger chain known as El Corral. This would have to be one of the biggest food chains across the country. Unlike Hornitos, you'll find it in virtually every city. Technically, there are also a few in some other Latin American countries, but it started in Colombia, and that's still where you'll predominantly find it. Now, I'm partial to a good burger myself, which is partly why I included this. Like, back in the day, I used to go around Sydney and write reviews on Zomato for every burger restaurant I could find, so you could say I'm a bit of a burger enthusiast. Now, when it comes to burger restaurants, I find there are varying calibers. Obviously, somewhere like McDonald's is more catering to the fast food market, like you go there to get a quick fix of that Big Mac flavor or whatever, and you don't expect too much more. Then on the other end of the scale, you have gourmet burger restaurants, which usually aren't chains, and if they are, they only have a few outlets tops. Then, of course, in between, you have a range of other standards, some which try and be it, like a better version of McDonald's, and others which skirt that line between fast food and gourmet. In terms of El Corral, I would put it in the fast food camp, but that's not an indictment on the food at all. When done right, a soft, greasy, fast food style burger can really hit the spot, and that's absolutely the case here. While they have the standard cheeseburger offerings with the patty, slice of cheese, tomato, lettuce, sauce, and a few variations of that familiar formula, what really makes them worth trying are their Colombian and Latin American influenced burgers. For example, one of the burgers titled Corral Costeña has pieces of plantain in it, along with a type of cheese found on Colombia's Caribbean coast that has a sort of creamy feta cheese quality to it. A couple of others contain papas callejeras, which are a type of fried potato, a bit like fries, but distinctively seen as a street food across Latin America. Then there's this Mexican-inspired burger containing corn chips, beans, and guacamole. Even the less regionally influenced burgers often still contain Colombian-style ingredients, like their version of mozzarella, for instance. If you're a burger junkie, it's really cool to be able to try some burgers with totally different flavors and ingredients that you've never had before, and if you're new to Colombia, El Corral is a great opportunity for this. As I said before, it's also very widespread across the country, so whatever city you're in, there'll likely be one not too far from you. Really, the only downside to El Corral I'd give is that they can be relatively expensive. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're no more than, say, your average fast food chain in Australia, 
but in Colombia they are one of the more expensive restaurants out there outside of fine dining. Still, it's a classic chain, so definitely worth giving a go. The next chain I wanted to talk about is admittedly barely a chain, as there are only three of them and it's exclusive to Bogotá at the time of recording, but I would be remiss not to mention it, as it's maybe my favourite chain in the country, and that is Chrono's Fantasy. Now this name sounds like a mix of Chrono as in the video game series and Final Fantasy, that's because that's exactly what it is. See, this is a restaurant themed around video games, something I've noticed seems to be somewhat more of a mainstream interest compared to Australia. I don't know, like back at home when I think of a gamer, I think of a specific type of person, like the sort of people you see at EB Games or gaming conventions. People who are nerds like me, basically. <laughs> Whereas in Colombia, that stereotype seems to be less true. You'll notice this right away when you go to this restaurant. Like, it's not just one demographic or one type of person who dines here. It's people of all walks of life, which is kind of cool. Getting into the restaurant itself, though, what I love about this place is that they've absolutely gone for broke in the theming here. If you want a textbook example of Colombians' passion and dedication to the things they love, look no further than this restaurant. The place is positively decked out with gaming-themed decoration and paraphernalia, from the Mario blocks hanging from the ceiling, to the umpteen character statues, to the tables and chairs littered with gaming illustrations and collages, to the giant LCD panels showing E3 trailers from throughout the last decade, they've really pulled out all the stops. It goes beyond just the aesthetics as well, as at every table there's a nearby TV hanging from the ceiling loaded with a Switch that contains a Nintendo online catalogue of retro games along with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for you to play. Personally, I think there's something kind of genius about giving customers the option to play video games while they wait for their food. I don't know, I've only been to this place alone, so the alternatives are basically stuffing around on my phone or staring into space for 10 minutes. I mean, I'm fine with that, but if you give me the option to play Super Metroid instead, it's kind of a no-brainer. Outside of these TVs, there are also several arcade machines throughout the restaurant, so no shortage of fun to be had here. Now this is great and all, but as a restaurant I should probably say something about the food, all of which is named after video game properties by the way. So the menu has a lot of variation, including entrees, mains, desserts, and several drinks made in-house. For entrees, there are some Latin American style offerings such as empanadas, aoyuma soup, and plantain chips. Uh, for mains, there are some steak, chicken, and even fish dishes, a selection of burgers and hot dogs along with some vegetarian options. Then for dessert, there are some ice creams, cakes, sweets, and the like, all arranged to look like certain video games. The drinks menu is equally as varied, ranging from cocktails to milkshakes to coffee to beer and everything in between. Now, it should be said that the food here isn't likely to blow your socks off per se. I mean, I personally think it's still pretty decent and satisfied me for my money, but it's really not the main event here. The reason you come to this restaurant is for the ambience, with the food being solid, but not the main reason people come. I should say too that the dishes can really range in price. Depending on what you choose, you could pay $4 or you could pay over $20, so I wouldn't say they're catering to any one specific price bracket. Next up on the list is crepes and waffles. Those titular menu items are certainly a specialty here, but there's also a bunch of other cafe food to choose from for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. These include soups, pitters, uh, various hot breakfasts, salads, but the real deal here are the sweet dishes. I already mentioned the crepes, which yes, are offered as both sweet and savoury, and I already mentioned the waffles, but you'll also find several other desserts and sweet breakfast items such as gourmet ice cream cups and plates, tiramisu, fruit puree, uh, pancakes, yoghurt, and a respectable drinks menu. Now this might remind you a little bit of the first entry on this list, Horonitos, uh, and you're not mistaken, as this is uh, definitely the same kind of all-day cafe with a varied menu for any occasion. I'm pleased to say too that it also matches Horonito's price bracket with most menu items costing less than 8 US dollars. There are however a few key differences between these cafes that I should note. Firstly, Crepes and Waffles has a bit more to offer in its desserts and sweet dishes, whereas Hornitos places more emphasis on its savoury meals. Both cafes still have a decent selection of both savoury and sweet, but overall I'd say Hornitos has more savoury, Crepes and Waffles has more sweet. I just wanted to interject real quick, when I originally wrote this script, I hadn't actually been to Crepes and Waffles for quite a while, so I'd totally forgotten that there is actually quite a substantial hot food and savoury food section of the menu, in addition to the sweet food. I couldn't find this full menu of hot food anywhere online, you know, there are some menus floating around, but it doesn't show the full menu of hot food. Um, but uh, yeah, since uh, recording this video, I have since been back to uh, Crepes and Waffles and I suddenly remembered upon looking at the menu, oh yeah, there is quite a lot of hot food as well. Honestly, maybe even more than Horonitos. So uh, yeah, just something to bear in mind. Just wanted to make that correction. Back to the video. 
Secondly, I should note that in contrast to Hornitos, Crepes and Waffles is not a bakery, and in general it's more of a dining experience as opposed to Hornitos, which is more of a hybrid between a bakery store slash dining cafe. I'd also say on that, because Crepes and Waffles isn't a bakery, you won't notice as many bread items on their menu compared to Hornitos. And the last difference I wanted to mention is a clear upside for Crepes and Waffles, and that is that unlike Hornitos, it's not exclusive to Bogota. Although it's not as widespread as something like El Corral, there are still quite a handful of them in most major cities. So if you're thinking of traveling to or living in a city other than Bogota, or if you are going to Bogota but just want to try something else, this is definitely a viable alternative to Hornitos. Technically there are also a few of them outside of Colombia, like in Mexico, Spain, Panama, Chile and Ecuador, uh, but this is still a Colombian chain and so around 95% of them are in Colombia. Finally, my last pick on this list is arguably the country's most famous cafe chain, and I'm talking about none other than Juan Valdez. You probably already know about Colombia's reputation for coffee, simply put, they cultivate some of the best coffee in the world, and if you're looking for the best coffee shop chain in the world's coffee capital, Juan Valdez is certainly a strong contender. Now in the interest of full disclosure, I will admit here that I'm actually not a coffee drinker myself, and so this recommendation comes second hand via the response I've seen from other people who rave about the coffee here. In terms of drink offerings, you'll find the standard variety here, lattes, espressos, cappuccinos, along with some cold drinks like iced coffee, frappes, and uh, some non-coffee options. Although I can't speak from my personal experience drinking the coffee, one thing I do appreciate are their coffee products that can be bought. As I said before, uh, Juan Valdez is a coffee shop, not just a cafe, and in fact not even just a coffee shop, but a coffee brand, meaning they produce their own products that they sell both in their shops and in supermarkets throughout the country. What I find really cool about the bags of coffee they sell is the choice they give you. See, so you can choose what department of Colombia you want your coffee from, be it Huila, Cudinamarca, Caldas, Quindio, Antioquia, or many other regions, a selection of their coffee products are named after the respective department where they were cultivated. And you don't have to be in the department to buy its given coffee either. A lot of the time you'll just be at Juan Valdez Cafe or the supermarket and you'll have all these options right in front of you wherever you are. As you'd guessed, each department's coffee has its own unique flavor profile and strength, which you can read about on the bag. Although I don't drink coffee, I can imagine how exciting it would be for coffee lovers being able to try all these different variations and deciding which is their favorite. If you want a recommendation, I've heard from the people I've spoken to who've tried it that Huila arguably has the best coffee, but I'll let you try and make that judgment for yourself. Now, it should be noted that this is a cafe, so you will find a few sweet cafe snacks, but it's nothing like Hornitos or Crepes and Waffles where you go for a meal, as it's still primarily a coffee cafe. In terms of locations, you'll find Juan Valdez all across the country. It's about as widespread as El Corral, as it's sort of Colombia's equivalent to Starbucks, albeit a lot better. Funnily enough, they do actually have Starbucks as well, only they're limited to Medellin and Bogota, whereas Juan Valdez is virtually everywhere. Apparently it also exists in the US, the Middle East, and several other Latin American countries, although again, you'll probably find it more in Colombia than anywhere else. Really, the only downside that comes to mind about this place is the price. Although it's the Colombian equivalent of Starbucks in terms of its prevalence across the country, it's not so much in terms of its quality, which is, from what I can tell, much more premium, as reflected in its higher price range. As always, it's probably not exorbitantly expensive by first world standards, but in relation to Colombian prices, it is on the more expensive side. Anyway, those were all the restaurants and cafes I wanted to mention today. Once again, they're not all the most quintessentially Colombian in their cuisine, but they're all still very iconic to the country. If you're looking for some classic regional food, I'll say again that you'll probably want to look more to local eateries. You'll certainly still find this in several chains, but far more so in these smaller places, which are highly abundant by the way. But that'll do it for today, thanks for watching all this way. As always, if you have a question or a suggestion for a future video topic, I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this, feel free to like, subscribe, bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!